We trust Sarah Porter. It took only one book, Vasa in the Night, and we were hooked. So then when we heard that she had a book coming out with twins, hauntings, possessions, and just general creepiness, we were on it like a shot. Porter does great things with atmosphere and world building, so her writing a horror novel promises to be phenomenal. When I cast your shadow. Get it? Like, possession? Anyways, the Monacker twins just lost their older brother. Dashiell Bonacker was charming, refined, charismatic, intelligent, manipulative, narcissistic, and self-destructive. To his younger sister Ruby, Dashiell was the bright son that she loved unconditionally. To Everett, Dashiell was part role model, part antagonist. Everett loved him, but not as fiercely as his twin sister. To their father, Dashiell is a hopeless case whom he had to cut out of their lives in order to minimize his influence on Ruby and Everett. Dashiell died recently of a drug overdose at his girlfriend's apartment. Ruby and Everett grieve in their own ways. But Ruby ends up having terrible nightmares. The most recent and disturbing one being one where Dashiell calls to her across a lake and when she swims to him, he drowns her. After that she feels okay, but she begins to lose time and she slowly realizes that she's being possessed by Dashiell. Everett realizes sooner that something is wrong and figures out that Dashiell is possessing his sister. It takes a while, but eventually Dashiell convinces him that he has things he needs to do, but he doesn't have to use Ruby's body. In order to protect his sister, Everett offers himself, and then they both become possessed by their brother. Dashiell is unable to cross over, stuck on the border between life and death. He's not the only one though. Dashiell got himself on the wrong side of some very dangerous ghost. Mainly the spirit Aloysius, who runs his own gang of spirits that try and lure people the living into being possessed. Dashiell, Ruby, and Everett will have to get over themselves, work out their issues, and generally trust each other in order to deal with this and hopefully all come out of this alive. First thing that should be acknowledged about this book is that it has a super creep me atmosphere. The language that Porter uses evokes a gloomy aura like the supernatural is just un under the surface. And then there's the language that the characters use. They have a tendency to use nicknames and sing-song phrases that seem like they would be right at home in something like The Shining, coming out of the mouth of some creepy twins. Come and play with us, Daddy. Porter also underscores how creepy their relationships are to each other with super creepy language, referring to each other as Ruby Roo, dot dot dash, and never ever. It evokes children singing eerie nursery rhymes and malicious childishness. Dashiell is the king of this. He's the one who came up with most of the nicknames, and most of the nicknames are for his sister Ruby. Ruby Roo, Ruby Slippers, and Slippers. Once or twice is cute and character building. More than that is creepy and character building for different reasons. There is always this question at the back of your mind of what the exact nature of the relationship is. Because when Ruby realizes she's possessed, she doesn't take it like most people would. With horror, screaming, get it off, get it off, get it off, like a cockroach just crawled over your hand. Instead of freaking out, she gets over it pretty fast. And then she starts to get into it. She starts to enjoy how she's becoming one with Dashiell and how their identities are bleeding into one another. It's the most incestuous thing since Bran caught Jamie and Cersei in the tower that one time. Dashiell even enjoys it, not blocking out moments that he's controlling her body the way he should so that Ruby starts picking up on some of his memories and thoughts like they're hers. Everett is far more discerning and recognizes how fucked up Dashiell and Ruby's relationship has gotten since he started to possess her. Everett's relationship with Dashiell is a little bit more straight. He's more aware of how manipulative and selfish Dashiell could be when he was alive, so he's less charmed by ghost Dashiell. His concern is for Ruby more than anyone else, but Everett also can't help but admire Dashiell's easy way of socializing and his magnetic, charming personality. He's more tempted to let Dashiell possess him because of some of Dashiell's confidence and aura gets transferred to him when Dashiell is inside him, but he quickly learns that being possessed by Dashiell is too steep of a price for the boost it gives him. One of the more uncomfortable comfortable elements in the book, besides the potential incest thing, is the system Porter has set up for the living and the dead. To possess someone, you have to kill them in the in-between world. For most of the living, they have to dream themselves there. Then they have to approach a spirit, literally walk towards them. And then the spirit has to murder them in cold blood. And it's not like, oh, I'm dead now. You know, remember, and experience the death like it's happening to your physical body. And then to stop being possessed and to block access to you, you have to find your dead and disgusting corpse in the in-between world and then climb back into it. And it's just as squishy and disgusting as it would be in real life. When I Cast Your Shadow is a good creepy little book. 
I hesitate to call it horror, but it definitely has elements of horror. But it's not really extremely scary, it's horror-ish. I'd classify it as supernatural, I guess. But anyways, if you're looking for something a little different to break up the usual stuff you read, unless of course you usually read horror, then this might be one you should check out. Sarah Porter does not disappoint with elements of character, atmosphere, or her world building. If you're a fan of Liv Bray, Chris Wooding, or Stephen King, then this book is right up your alley.